<clears throat> Thank you, Jonathan. I want to start by acknowledging my co-author on this, John Lehman, who has been with me through a lot of these hardships and frustrations. And well, let's just say this is going to be a 30-minute critical talk of what trying to use units in scientific pythons like. So, um, so you know, not only is it MetPy's choice of unit support, this is about my descent into madness in terms of dealing with the challenges I've encountered in employing a unit package. So to start here, what is MetPy? Uh, we're a community toolkit for solving atmospheric science and meteorology problems. So just trying to provide reusable pieces, kind of like AstroPy does for astronomy, and astrophysics we're doing for meteorology. So that's our various weird plots, some of our funky file formats, and then um, a lot of derived parameters and calculations, and that's where unit support comes in. So when we're talking about units, I mean handling of physical quantities, you know, important in scientific applications. Every um, value you have has some kind of dimensionality attached to it, be it, you know, this is length, this is temperature, this is pressure. Those, you know, temperature and pressure are very important in meteorology. And so that's why we have, you know, from the start of MetPy, one of its core principles was, well, all the calculations should be unit aware so that, you know, we can keep things straight. One of those motivating examples of you know, when units aren't done properly was the Mars Climate Orbiter, which essentially bounced off of Mars. It failed to enter orbit because one of the um, software modules used in trajectory calculation put out values in English instead of metric units. And because of that, a multiple hundred million dollar spacecraft did nothing but just shoot off into space. So we wanted to avoid those problems in MetPy, and so core part of the design was using a unit library. Um, this, in our case, we chose one called Pint. Um, one of its claims to fame is being able to support temperature units, which some of the others don't do. And so given our preponderance for using temperatures in meteorology, it was important to use a library that supported um, temperature units. And just in terms of, you know, we had a little bit of code before we did this, and that really drastically simplified our documentation, as opposed to having all these doc strings where it says, this takes temperature, must be in Kelvin. This takes pressure, must be in Pascals, and so on. It eliminates all of that documentation challenge, and all the maintenance burden there, and simplifies the user experience, in theory, where you can just have your array, units are attached. Um, also works well with file formats like NetCDF, where units are just part of the metadata. And so when you have a unit library that can dynamically attach units, you can just read these files and pull out the metadata, and then you know, work with things easily. And then it also eliminates when we're trying to do maintenance and, and you know, validation of calculation functions. You, know, you don't have to go through this huge set of steps trying to figure out where every calculation goes in terms of what units it puts in and what units it takes out. I did that once for my doctoral code and that took me you know, a day or two trying to make sure, you know, or at least I thought there might be a unit problem and I'm stepping through everything trying to understand what's going on. Didn't find anything, but having, having the computer track this for me would be a whole lot better than doing this manually. So those are the ideas and some of the general benefits we saw from using um, Pint. So we're all happy, this works great, you know, the world is awesome. Um, a little more about Pint, um, it's pure Python, so there's no compiled extensions here, so that's great for our, um, ease of getting it installed and distributed. Um, it wraps, rather than being a NumPy array subclass, it wraps various, um, numeric entities, either lists of numbers or scalars or NumPy arrays. Um, like I mentioned before, it supports temperature, you know, units having offsets, so like Celsius versus Kelvin, um, which are, is probably the biggest reason we need it in, in uh, meteorology. And then there are a few alternatives out there, um, AstroPy units probably being one of the most frequently used ones. Um, and then there's a few others, and there are many other smaller ones. I think a few years ago, somebody did a talk at SciPy that did a bake-off between about 17 different unit libraries. So here's an example usage of Pint. So we do some imports from MetPy, and then we take a temperature, multiply it by degrees Fahrenheit, take a relative humidity value, multiply it units percent, and then we can throw that into a function to calculate dew point, and then we can convert that on the output to degrees Fahrenheit. So Reads very straightforward, simple for users to understand. Um, here's what you're doing if you don't have Pint, as an example of why we want to make this trade-off. So here's trying to use SciPy constants functions for doing temperature conversion. And so we see we have to do 
Um, first, take temperature and convert temperature saying 75 F to C, which doesn't read particularly well. You know, which one's which, which is the starting point, which is the end. And you've got this relative humidity of 0.7, and then you've got to do all these conversions on the way out of the function. That just makes me so sad to see that, and I'm glad we're not writing that kind of code. So the end, I mean, that's my talk, five minutes, everything just works, great. So here we go, we're gonna do an integral. We'll use the trapezoid function from NumPy, and so we're gonna take some random numbers here in degrees Celsius. We're gonna call trap Z, and um, what happened to my units? So this is kind of the theme of the talk here. We see no error message, just silently NumPy decides you don't need units. So now we've taken our happy-go-lucky tire swing and what we really have is just everything is on fire. So really it's the end of my sanity because nothing works, or at least it works enough to tease you that you think you're gonna be really happy and then it breaks in sometimes silent, sometimes loud and obnoxious, but confusing ways. So the only thing worse than not using a unit library like we saw with the SciPy constants is trying to use one where everything's expecting NumPy arrays because the challenges are many. And I will note here, I tried just for the sake of things to go ahead and try astropy.units. Everything works just as well as Pyte. So as an example of NumPy SciPy here, let's start with concatenate. So you have two values, you want to concatenate them to a bigger array. So here's an example, just doing it with regular arrays. You know, we have three and four, we can cut it together, we get an array of three and four, just like you'd expect. Now, what happens when we go to use units? Well, we take A and B and throw units of meters on there and we concatenate them and once again, quietly your units just disappear. Now that's dropped sensibly or you can understand why it might be going on because NumPy needs to create new storage for an array. It doesn't know about units. And so it just makes a new array and throws values in it and units just go away because there's no way for subclasses or things that want to behave like arrays to say, hey, this is NumPy, you really need to do this when you make a new empty version. Um, this is an open issue on NumPy. Um, I haven't seen much traction on it lately, but maybe there's hope for that being solved and at least this class of problem could get resolved. What about maybe calculating a gradient? So we have values and we want to get a physical gradient of these values. So here's how you do it with just an array of data. We have a uh, uniform range and we divide by a delta of 0.1. So we get this array of tens. That all makes sense. So what happens with units? Oh, it got cut off. Well, instead, we take, you know, maybe an array of degrees Celsius and we take a gradient of it and we get a type error. Um, Traceback gets cut off when I've blown up the screen like this, but we can say certainly the error message is no help in understanding what's going on here. <clears throat> Root cause here is there's a call to NumPy is scalar because I gave it a float in terms of the spacing of grid points. And unfortunately, because it's wrapped in a pint quantity, NumPy says, well, that's not actually a scalar. I need to treat you like an array. And then that just goes down the wrong code path and everything blows up. What about interpolation? There's another useful tool we want to use a lot. This is a recent thing we've been employing in MetPy. So here's, again, how the call looks for just regular old data. We're just going to interpolate a line, just x, even range. The line is x equals y. Interpolate, get 1.5. Now with units, value error this time. Object of too small depth for desired array. All we did here, again, was x is units of meters. The value we want to get is in meters, so unit-wise it all works out, but um, that does not work out when you want to call NumPy. Oop. Bad. So there's no way the average user is going to figure out what the, you know, two, the depth method message means, so, you know, that's just user, user hostile for our users of the library. And unfortunately, that call disappears into C code somewhere. So actually, for me trying to track down where the problem lies was just hopeless. I just throw up my hands. <clears throat> what about SciPy optimization? So in this case, we're going to try and use fixed point optimization out of SciPy optimize. Um, this uses, and in this case, you have a callback for solving iteratively. 
And in this case, we want to call other calculations that use units. And this is what I kind of want to write. There's no, you know, no unit specific code here. We just call some functions, dew point and vapor pressure, do some calculations and return it. And we just want to iterate here. That's not what I get to write. Instead, what I get to write is a whole bunch of stuff that drops units when we call a fixed point, inside the callback reattach units, and then drop them again on their way out. So we need to drop units when going into SciPy code and reattach before we go into MetPy code, so we're bouncing back and forth here. Does not make me happy. So in general, our mitigation approach here when we're trying to do you know, work with NumPy in a flexible matter here is we've just got to try it, drop the units as necessary when they cause problems, and then when we do that, we have to reattach on their way out of those calculation functions, essentially just subverting all of the unit handling. I mean, it's not so bad for our library functions when we're doing this, you know, to hide things from other downstream users, but um, for the users doing this, I mean, if they want to call, you know, expect them to have other quantities and test out some calculations, this is the kind of challenges they've got to deal with. So another library near and dear to my heart, I am a matplotlib core developer, so this, you know, it's within my power to change, but these are the challenges I've run into with matplotlib, which I should note has a unit framework, or at least support for doing unit conversions built into the library. So here's an interesting one. So plotting with master arrays in matplotlib, it does a nice thing where it breaks up your line segments into discrete, or breaks up a line with mass points into discrete line segments. So here, I'll just show you, this is not a case where just using units is bad. This, here we create an array of random data and we attach units and we call plot and everything does just work just fine. Works great. Now, masked arrays, no units this time. So in here we see we took our data, we masked it, we threw out values less than zero and now we got this set of line segments here. So removing the mass points, looks good. It's kind of what I want in this case. So what if we used mass data and units? So in this case now, instead of getting the discrete line segments, it fills in with a value of 1.0. This is not the original floating point values that were in the mass array. They're not anything that makes any sense whatsoever here. So I, you know, I haven't dug into in detail on this, but this was a really confusing one. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Okay, another one, axe H line and axe V line. So this is trying to make horizontal and vertical lines spanning the entire axis. Um, and again, I wanna mention matplotlib has built-in support for unit conversions. So, you know, in, in theory that support means you can plot data with one unit attached and then request the axes to actually plot the data in another set of units, which is something I so desperately wanna use. So in this case, we're trying to essentially highlight what we call the zero isotherm, so the line of even temperature across the plot. So here I say, you know, plot axe H line, zero times units degrees Celsius. Value error cannot compare quantity in class NumPy float 64. So essentially it does, goes through a lot of different calls in here and what you end up doing is trying to compare what you're plotting against the limits on the plot. Um, and having tried to go through and enable the unit conversions for pint within matplotlib doesn't help. There's literally no, without significant refactoring of this plotting function, there's actually no code path I could figure out to actually get these things to work um, right. And Thomas has given me a weird look. We could talk more about that later, but it, I tried fixing this. I wanted it to work and that there was harder than it should be. Um, essentially what you end up going in there is there's a call to NumPy array and that's just drops units. So the mitigation in this case that we've actually implemented within MetPy, this is what shipping now is, we register pint.quantity with matplotlib's unit handling, but use that to automatically drop units whenever we call a plotting function. <sighs> All right, one more. X-Array has really been taking off within the geosciences. You get labeled axes for n-dimensional grids, you get coordinate values attached to your arrays of data so you can easily just pass around this one object and have your data values and know where they are in space and time. It's great. It 
kind of works with units, in addition to the fact that they have metadata attached to them where you could know, you know, the string units that came in from your data file. So all right, we import X array, we create a data array here where we say one, two, three, here's some coordinate values, one, two, three. And then I say units.m times data. Just like I did before, one exception. We see we get out here, we get a data array. We see the meters get attached to the end. That's a little weird. That's kind of how Pint just assumes it works with a NumPy array. And so you end up looking like, well, it looks like my coordinates have units meters, but not my original data. Subpar, but at least you're not gonna get bugs this way. You're just gonna see weird printing. But notice, the units are on the left here. So units times data array. We're all taught in school, multiplication is commutative. So if we put the units to the right like I want to write, data times units, nope, they're just gone. Just silently, no more units. No error, but you know, not what you expect either. I just, I can't even anymore. It's just, it's just one of these after another. So, and ex explanation here is, the multiplication gets, or in this case, add, I wrote, but really it's multiplication. Um, the first argument of the pair of operands is what controls which function gets called. So when we put the units first, we use quantity.multiply, and you know that works fine, because it knows about units, and it's just trying to wrap the data array like it would a NumPy array. X, when X array is the first operand, it calls its multiplication function, and it says, I have no clue about this unit thing, but you, you, know, you can degrade to an array, so we'll use that, and the units just disappear. So I can't teach people in our workshops that the order of multiplication matters. That's just, that's not gonna happen. So at this point, that's kind of the end of the story. I mean, this is the current state of things as I have it. There is no happy ending here. I, I have not solved any of these problems. We just work around them on a daily basis. And when I say the only thing worse than not using units is using one of these libraries, I'm not kidding. I, on a weekly basis, am debating that original design decision to use a unit library. And I haven't ripped it out yet, but it's always like So the core problems here. NumPy as array, just array, is just the same as saying, please silently discard my units for me. Um, and numpy.array as array gets used all over the place to convert lists or floats or whatever to arrays to make sure that, you know, th from that conversion also just, I wanna check that this object that I have supports, you know, so doing mathematical operations and slicing. But it's also the way you make sure that the object you have supports the full numpy C API. And so you have all of these uses conflated into one function that, um, you know, is the default function to go to and yet doesn't support NumPy subclasses or anything that wants to look like arrays. And in a language that's, you know, supposed to be duct typing friendly, this is duct typing hostile. So things that should be considered arrays just don't get considered arrays. Um, and the other challenges, other array managing libraries like XArray, um, Pandas I assume would have the same problems here. Um, just they need to know about your need for units and so you end up with this tight coupling to try and solve this problem. And NP as any array does exist, so it does help with some subclasses, and I've done my part to go through some of the various calculations to try and replace as array with these calls, but that doesn't help with pint or uh, even X array. So trying to you know, make these things play together nicely just has a lot of problems. So some possible solutions. Um, NumPy 113 gained support for array ufunc. So that's a new way to try and control how ufuncs behave, and it allows a lot more customization of how these calls take place, and that's great for controlling what happens when you call add and things like that. I'm pretty sure that doesn't help the fact that, you know, the order of multiplication matters right now. So I'm not sure how we're gonna, if this, that this really helps anywhere there, but it does help with some other designing these libraries and the hoops you have to jump through to write a unit library. Um, one of the things I'm thinking might help would be to use abstract base classes. These were added, I believe, in Python 3, and allows you kind of to declare interfaces that things should be implementing. And so you don't actually have to inherit from an object, but you can just say, you know, say you implement this interface, 
and then is instance will actually pass, assuming you implement all the methods you need. Um, idea I have in my head right now is, you know, we could have a couple of these ABCs for the different types of actual array things we care about. You know, a loose ABC for just, I only care about slicing and math. I don't actually care about your layout and memory, just to support multi-dimensional slicing and support add, subtract, multiply, and, you know, I don't have to convert your type, and that would help a lot of these problems. I'm not sure how that helps with the composition between, say, X array and pint, though. Um, the last one I have here is custom NumPy D types. And I had a discussion last year with some of the NumPy guys. Uh, essentially involves a lot of work at the C level to kind of better abstract NumPy's D type handling. Um, and then the idea would be to try and encode units as part of the data type. And then, you know, your data type doesn't change, so your units wouldn't drop. Um, it would solve a lot of these problems. I think there's a few of talking with Nathan that, you know, it might, might make some other weirdness, but it would certainly help with the silent dropping of things. Um, it's also the most technically challenging of all these when you have to try and dig into NumPy C code, which is, you know, not trivial for those of us who, act to like, who like to write actual Python code. So, conclude, the user experience when trying to substitute for NumPy arrays with something that has units is really, really frustrating. Um, and that part comes partially because you have this expectation that things should work. You have subclasses, you have all the hooks you need, you can override the math operations, you know, we're a duct typing style language, so you can substitute one thing for another. So it's like, oh, it should work, and you get close. You know, you do an initial add and things just flow, and then, then you do advanced things and it blows up. So they're just, there's got to be a w better way to make this work better so we can do robust science and have, you know, not be sitting here worrying about all our units and getting them wrong, but just let the computer track things like it should. Um, and I'm certainly open to other suggestions on these solutions and things we can do. I've had some discussions about trying to, you know, in the short term, we'll probably end up making a custom X-Array wrapper that knows about units, and that will get the job done, but we're tightly coupling to X-Array at that point, so it's not as elegant in terms of, you know, our different scientific libraries should play together regardless of what you use to hold the numbers. Um, and I'm not here to rag on anyone's work. I mean, this comes from a place of love and just immense frustration. Whoop, there we go. <laughs> and with that, I'm done and willing to take questions. Uh, and we do have a few minutes for questions, so if anyone has it, um, raise your hand and I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I say this as the author of a unit library, is the problem that there are too many unit libraries and, and that like, like X-Array can't implement support for the unit library that everybody uses? They, they'd have to have support for 17 different unit libraries if they wanted to, to get, capture everybody's code? Uh, I think it's more like it's not a core concept of some of these libraries where, you know, X-Array is a labeled array with coordinate information. Units is a separate problem. Um, the same thing happens with master arrays, right? And then we, there was an effort to try and put mass support into the core ND array type and that, you know, died. So it's these problems where you have these good ideas that not everyone wants and I really, I think the core problem is we don't have the right hooks in the interface to properly solve these problems. Have you, talk, have you talked to anyone about JPL, uh, JPL about this? I have not. Because they're, they're the persistent, they're the perennial units are broken in Matplotlib source right. of bug reports, so they must have something with units. They have something with units. I'm not sure if it's, like there are other, other unit libraries out there that don't try to be NumPy arrays that probably work just fine. Um, while we take one more question, uh, can I get the next speaker to come up and start setting up? Have you looked at the possibility of uh, modifying X-Ray's mull function to check if what is coming in is a quantity or a unit and handle it appropriately with you know, non-dependency support? Sure, I haven't looked at that. I mean, that's essentially what we're gonna end up doing um, internally. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to uh, um, bake that into X-Ray itself. I mean, if there's a, if we got, I mean, another option, I guess, is to get together with all the unit libraries and define some kind of interface that other array-like things can uh, depend on if, you know, maintainers of those other array-like things are interested in that stuff. I mean, it's kind of this problem of trying to support something without baking in the assumptions. One more question. Um, so kind of a two-part one, but 
Do these support composite types? So like say centimeter degrees per kilometer? Yeah, so the, the unit library does all the proper yeah. math and has like full dimensionality tracking. And so if you went to D-types, is it like a D-type per unit or is it just like a unit D-type? Because uh, you could end up just introducing I, hundreds. I, I think it, it's the D-type idea would be to like track the dimensionality within the D-type. And then when you do operations, the dimensionality could be appropriately updated within that, uh, the array. All right, uh, let's thank the speaker one more time, and I'm going to give people a couple minutes to switch rooms.